What's going on everyone? It's Sean from All Things EV, and this video is all about surmising why I think Tesla might be on the verge of updating Model S and X battery packs. If you follow the company really closely, you know that they've been making a lot of changes as of late. In fact, this all sort of began, at least in my head, about this imminent change when Tesla did away with the 75 kilowatt hour battery pack back in January of 2019. And they didn't just stop there. They actually continued with some of these changes. They introduced a standard and long range battery pack naming convention, just like what they do with the Model 3. And they also dropped the prices on their cars pretty significantly. So I wanna dive into some of the reasons why I think it might make sense to introduce some new battery packs for S and X. Tesla has this long history of cycling out battery packs to keep things fresh and to keep them ahead of competition. In fact, if you remember way back in the day, they used to offer a 40 kilowatt hour battery pack. They also used to offer a 60 kilowatt hour battery pack, and they've changed out these battery packs for one reason or another. Sometimes it's to get more revenue in the door in a uh, short, time frame. Sometimes it's to introduce new technology, whether that's uh, dual motor or, or performance packs. And their longest production pack was the 85 kilowatt hour pack, producing it from September 2012 to February 2017, a total of 42 months. Next is the 75D, which as I mentioned before, they recently discontinued, and that was produced for 33 months. And the third longest produced battery pack, we have the P100D, which is available now on Tesla's website. And of these that I've mentioned, the P100D pack is the longest offered performance battery pack. And the 100D is the third longest non-performance pack that they've ever offered. So you can see why it might be time to do away with the 100 battery pack, or at least make that the lowest offering and introduce a larger battery pack with more range. In fact, the 100 battery pack, the 100 kilowatt hour battery pack was first offered in August of 2016. That was the performance version. And then later on in 2017, January 2017, they offered the non-performance version. So this thing has been going on for over two years, two and a half years now that Tesla has offered and sold this 100 kilowatt hour pack. The next reason why I think it might be time for Tesla to introduce an S and X battery update is version three supercharging. And as you saw a few weeks ago, Tesla introduced V3 supercharging, which allows for Tesla's to charge at a peak rate of 250 kilowatts. Strangely, the Model S and X owners were not invited to this event. And the only mention of the two vehicles were in Tesla's blog post stating, we're launching V3 supercharging for Model 3, our highest volume vehicle, and we'll continue to expand access as we review and assess the results of millions of charging miles. Notice how they didn't include Model S and X in that, and they said that they would be continuing to expand access. So basically at the moment, only early access Model 3 owners have the ability to access this V3 supercharging. So what I think that they're saying here is that they will continue to roll out V3 access outside of that early access program to Model 3 owners. They continue on by saying, we will increase Model S and X charging speeds via software updates in the coming months. I'll pause there because they don't specifically say V3 charging rates. They just say charging speeds via software updates. So a big part of me thinks that that increase is just to the 145 kilowatt that the V2 will get upgraded to. And they end it by saying V3 supercharging will roll out to a wider fleet in an over the air firmware update to all owners in Q2 as more V3 superchargers come online. So what we know for certain is that Model S and X owners, even if the current ones are eligible for it, most likely won't get access to V3 until Q2. Now, 
at the time of this recording, it's the end of March, it's the end of Q1, and Q2 will begin in April. So it's possible that if Model S and X owners are eligible for V3, that we may see something here in the first part of Q2. However, I have a suspicion, I have a funny suspicion that current Model S and X vehicles, as they are right now, as they exist, will not be able to take that V3 supercharging. They won't be able to take that V3 supercharging because the battery packs of S and X, as I understand it, are not designed to take that high charge rate. The Model 3s, however, they've got a larger charging cable. The way that the cooling system in the battery pack is designed is far better at distributing the cooling through the ribbons and making sure that the cells, the battery cells, remain at an optimal temperature. How easy would it be for Tesla to upgrade the cooling architecture in Model S and X? I'm not entirely sure, but it seems like that would need to happen before Model S and X gain access to V3. After Tesla discontinued the 75 kilowatt hour pack, you saw a new naming convention that Tesla introduced for Model S and X, very similar to the Model 3, calling it standard range and long range. Only four weeks after introducing these naming conventions, Tesla did away with the standard range for the Model X. And for the Model S, they did away with the standard range six weeks after introducing it. This now leaves only the long range 100 kilowatt hour pack as the only option for both vehicles. What reason does Tesla have to remove options from their flagship luxury vehicles? Could this simply be a simplification of the production process for S and X? Or could they be trying to phase out the 100 kilowatt hour inventory before introducing a new version? If we go back to the Model S battery life cycle, Tesla has only ever offered one battery option once back in 2013 and 2014. Some people online have said that they're curtailing Model S and X production because they want to invest more time into accelerating Model 3 production. And I'm not entirely sure that that's the best case since Model S and X have a proven production track record and a very generous gross margin. Which brings me to my next point. Model S and X are Tesla's longest standing flagship vehicles that have a proven track record, a 25% gross margin, and a production line that is well established. Model 3 won't see that 25% gross margin until later in 2019, so says Tesla. What better way to excite sales for Model S and X than to introduce a new battery pack and faster charging rates. My last and final point for why I think Model S and X refreshes are imminent can be found on the Model 3 $35,000 press call. Elon was asked a question by Bloomberg's Tom Randall about production and addressing a larger addressable market. Elon shares that Tesla expects to produce 350,000 to 500,000 Model 3s and 70,000 to 100,000 Model S in X. The last time that Tesla produced 70,000 Model S and X was way back in 2016. This tells me that they are at the very least thinking about a potential drop in S and X sales. This is likely due to weak demand this quarter, Q1 2019. So what if Tesla was anticipating a slowdown for S and X sales in Q1, and that's why they planned on the lower end of 70,000 Model S and X produced in 2019, but on the higher end, 100,000, knowing and hoping that they would reintroduce a refreshed Model S and X with new battery packs and higher charging. This is pure speculation here, but it seems to be that Tesla is making some decisions around battery packs, charging, and pricing that indicate an S and X change, upgrade, battery pack is imminent. I'd love to hear what you all think in the comments down below. Am I reading too much into it, or is there something in the very near future for S and X. This is Sean Mitchell from All Things EV, and thanks to everyone who took the time to watch this video. 
Thank you to my Patreon supporters. If you are a new viewer to my channel and this video, please consider subscribing. And if you're a regular, please hit that like button and I'll see everyone on the next video.